If you were as old as I am, you'll remember such classics like Transport Tycoon with the more recent Transport Fever 2 fitting a nice little hole for us Chris Sawyer fans. So when I see games like Sweet Transit pop up in the old Next Fest Festival, it makes me want a Tommy Tank Engine because these games require a bit of brain power and logistics is the name of the game in my line of work. But oh bloody dear people, what promised so much provides so little here and it's a classic case of style over substance. Continue watching Little Padawans and Reggie would explain why Sweet Transit in its current form needs a trainload of work. Now ladies and gentlemen, it is currently the Steam Next Fest, whereby hundreds of demos are being released for your joy across multiple indie developers. So Reggie here is gonna bang out a few mini reviews over the coming days. These are only gonna be short and sweet as I wanna give you all some quantity to look forward to. So keep checking back and more videos are gonna get posted over the coming days with that down and dirty analysis. So, this might be the shortest review of all time, people, because when Reggie here plays Sweet Transit, he can't tell his ass from his bloody elbow. Honestly, people, Sweet Transit is a bloody mess of a game. I suspect it has a sound and well-rounded premise, but it lacks terribly in explaining its own bloody systems. The basic on-screen prompts and how things work simply don't give you enough information. It leaves you feeling like you've just watched Christopher Nolan's talent after drinking two bottles of wine as you try and work out what the bloody hell just happened. Now, I think the idea here is to build your own town complete with workers, houses, and industry, which you then connect up by roads. And the key, of course, is that each village area requires a train station. I know this, people, because I saw a bloody picture of it, so that goods and people can move about the gaff. Thing is, people, it doesn't really tell you how to do a lot of this stuff, and it asks that you just click randomly in the hope of something happening. And what blows me away here is that a developer puts in all this hard work into these huge maps, which are very impressive by the way, rather cute and sweet graphics and animation, but forget the most important factor of all, you, the bloody player, and how you might actually interact with their game as a novice. When a player picks this up, he or she needs to understand what each item does, what each icon means, how money is made, what all the little menus do, and how the systems all work together. We ain't building rockets here, boys and girls, we're just playing a game, but not here. You might as well be building this in the upside down, because frankly, it's a frustrating mess. I eventually did manage to get a train up and running, but there was no real explanation of how routes work, so I kind of just worked it out by sheer luck and using transport fever as my guide. But I had no idea how I put in an unloading space in my stations, how long the tracks needed to be, how passengers get to the station, or if they're even waiting there. I literally had zero clue what demands were being put on my train station and how I should cater to that. And don't get me started on the UI. I think I'm a pretty smart lad, boys and girls, but Jesus on a stick. How on earth do I build roads for my village was anyone's guess. I mean, Reggie here did start building some dirt paths, but once the menu went away, I couldn't get back to it no matter how hard I tried to rummage through the nonsense. The UI just has icons buried within icons, and they're clearly not pathed out in a logical fashion to the player. And again, that is you lovely people as to what the bloody hell is going on. And for that, the game dies as quickly as my excitement began. Now you could call Reggie an utter plonker because I've looked at other YouTube videos before creating my own ear, and I've seen people make some very intricate and very nice train systems and they speak very highly of it. But I don't have time for that kind of learning people. I'm not trying to fly a bloody aircraft here like I am in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I just wanna get on with the good stuff and build a load of train stations. So if you're like me and not this clever nerd, then try to take what I say with some credibility. Now here's the thing, graphically, I was actually very impressed. It's got a nice 2D feel to it, and there's some nice detail in there. Trains look good, and while I certainly don't have the realism of, say, a transport fever, it does have a certain art style, more akin to something like They Are Billions. Maps look good, as I mentioned, with different resources being littered throughout and the animations aren't too bad either. There's some nice little details such as being able to see the signals change color based on train positions or watching people go about their daily lives as they create new buildings. So overall, you get the impression here the developers spent a lot of time and it shows it really is a nice little polished title graphically and it makes other early access games look shite in comparison. 
Then comes the sound people, it's bloody brilliant. It's spot on in terms of the tunes you hear throughout. Before you know it, you'll be humming along to the little piano humdingers that belong in a western style saloon. It's pretty inspired soundtrack and one that deserves credit. Ambient sounds, however, do seem non-existent, so I never really got the feeling people were going about their daily slog of risking life and limb in the coal mines. So in that regard, it all did feel very flat, but overall, I was more than impressed than I was not not impressed. And so, you have a game here where the developers have clearly put the effort into a great soundtrack, a lovely little polished and clean looking game, and I suspect there are some great game mechanics running underneath. But all of it, people, bloody all of it, is let down by how these systems are actually presented to you in the quite frankly god-awful UI and fundamentally shocking tutorial where you are just expected to hit potluck and understand how it all bloody works. Honestly, it's a real shame, people, because by releasing the demo like this, they may put people off buying the full game. And unless I see vast improvements in the UI and making it as simple as possible for us dumb people, then it's always going to be a hard pass for me. And that's insane because the game is out in just six weeks. And like I say, the biggest point here above anything else is that you know deep down there is actually probably a very, very good game hidden inside here. And with that people, until next time, Reggie outs.